You will notice the beautiful altar decorations today that were put up for us, and you'll notice information about these altar decorations in your bulletin today, that they reflect the wonderful global community that we are part of. We are gathering today with Christians all over the world to celebrate this beautiful gift of love that Jesus left for us. As I prepared for World Communion Sunday and what I would say to you this morning, I was reminded of a story that a preacher friend of mine shared with me about his time growing up in church on Communion Sundays. He said that there was this older couple who was a member of his congregation and they had difficulty hearing one another. They may have had hearing aids, he said, but that was back in the day when hearing aids weren't quite as good as they are today. And so during the service, they would often talk to one another in the pews. And as a child, he said he found it quite humorous. It would add a lot of entertainment to the worship service to listen to the conversation that this old man and old woman had with one another he said the old woman would sometimes look at her husband and say, what did he say? And he'd turn to her, he said lion's not good. Oh, okay, yeah. And she'd just nod her head politely and go on and try to understand the rest of the service. But he says he remembers this one particular time when they went up for communion they had the tradition in that church of everybody coming forward a pew at a time. Y'all probably have done that here. And they kneel at the communion rail. As they kneel at the communion rail, the pastor would come by and give each person a piece of bread and one of those little small cups of juice, a person at a time. Well, as they knelt down, the old woman turned to her husband and said, I hope they don't serve grape juice today. And her husband said, well, if they do, just drink it for Jesus. And she said, I don't want to drink it for Jesus. I wish they served 7-Up. I don't like grape juice. And he said, oh, woman, just be quiet and drink it for Jesus. Well, my friend said as he got up from the communion rail, he had to peer over and look to see if she drank it for Jesus, and she didn't. My friend said, I don't think Jesus minded either. We all have different ways of coming to the communion table, and as a seminary professor told me long ago, Communion is still valid with one of the elements. It was valid for her as she ate the bread. I remember serving a small congregation, and they had a pastor who wanted them to serve communion by intinction. Y'all know what intinction is? The pastor holds the chalice and gives you a piece of bread, and you take the bread and you dip it in the cup. So it's one common cup for everybody. Well, there were people in the congregation who didn't like that because they said the children left crumbs all over the place as they left the communion table. And also, they had a tendency to put their little fingers right inside of the grape juice as they dipped the bread in the cup. And so somebody in that congregation had this brilliant idea that they would have the common cup, a loaf of bread, and they'd have those little trays with those little small glasses in them. The little trays were for the children or for people who were afraid that others were putting their fingers all the way down in the cup. And the chalice was there for those who liked the idea of one cup for all people. So everybody was satisfied, which is pretty rare in the church, isn't it? Those stories remind me that we have lots of different ways of celebrating communion. Today, as Christians gather all over the world, 
They gather in sanctuaries that are old and beautiful like this one. They gather in modern sanctuaries that look more like auditoriums. They also gather in small huts with dirt floors and tin roofs. They gather out in the open air in fields. They gather in homes as many are doing today as you're watching us online, gathering around a computer screen or a television screen, seeking to participate in worship and in community together. There are congregations that adorn their sacrament of Holy Communion with beautiful music like we have had today that just stirs your spirit and lifts your heart with love as you actually feel the power of the presence in this place. But there are sanctuaries and gatherings of people of faith today where there are no instruments. There are just the sweet voices of the people attempting to sing glory to God, praising God for this gift of love and this gift of community. You know, it doesn't really matter how we come to this table and celebrate these gifts that Christ has given to us, the most important thing is why. Why do we gather in this place to celebrate? The reading from the text of Hebrews today said that we should not neglect the gathering together of the community. For as we gather together, we provoke one another to love and to good works. We encourage one another. We gather wisdom from one another. As we continue in this sermon series of looking at the ways that God imparts wisdom to us, the community of faith is one of those strong, strong sources of faith and wisdom for us. As we encourage and build one another, one another up in this community, for it is in this community that we learn how to love one another regardless of our differences, and we learn that we ourselves are loved and precious in God's sight. We read today also from the Gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter, where Jesus has been preaching and teaching the community around him. Crowds have been gathering around him to hear what Jesus had to say and adults had been bringing their children to meet Jesus and to hear what Jesus had to say. And the disciples, I'm sure they were well-meaning. They wanted to protect Jesus' time and his attention. But they were stopping the little children from coming to Jesus. They were hindering the children. They were putting up a wall of separation. They were keeping some of God's children from coming to God. And we have so many walls in our world today keeping people from the love of God, don't we? Jesus, the text says, was indignant. Indignant. He said to his disciples, No, don't do that. Don't stop anyone from coming to me. My love is for all. You see, children in that day were viewed as worthless, as insignificant. And Jesus is saying, no one is insignificant to me. All are precious in my sight. When we gather together as a community of faith with open hearts, open minds, and open doors like this congregation does so beautifully, we are modeling that for the world and telling the world that we have more in common than we do have things that differentiate us from one another, and that we are all God's beloved children, precious in his sight, and Jesus bids all of us to come to his table of love and grace. One of my favorite stories is about Father Jim. Father Jim was the head of an orphanage for children, children who lived in a big old home with him. Father Jim had a certain knack 
about helping each child who came to live in that home know that they were precious and special and beloved by God. If a child came in with unruly hair, Father Jim had a way of making that child think that everybody wants unruly hair. If a child came in with big feet, Father Jim had a way of helping that child believe that everybody was envious of big feet because big feet were the in thing. Well, one day, Father Jim was out at the grocery store buying groceries, and the social worker came by with a little nine-year-old boy to introduce to the orphanage. He needed a place to stay, and she thought Father Jim's house was the best place for this little nine-year-old boy. He had a big birthmark on the side of his face, and it was obvious that he had been abused and neglected that he had not been loved or accepted by anyone in his nine years of life. When the social worker left the house, this little nine-year-old started cursing like up a storm, saying all sorts of ugly things about the social worker and about everybody in Father Jim's house. And after his little tirade of yelling and fussing, he went off in a corner of the room and he just huddled down put his hand on that side to cover up that big birthmark and started sobbing. The other kids stayed away and just watched, and they wondered, what will Father Jim do when he gets here? And then they heard Father Jim's old station wagon pulling up in the driveway, and they all ran out like they always did when Father Jim came. The little kids grabbed him underneath the knees, hugging his legs. Father Jim, Father Jim, we're so glad you're here. Father Jim came into the house, and he noticed that little nine-year-old crouched down in the corner. And he said, well, what do we have here? And the other little kids said, the social worker brought him by. And Father Jim walked straight over to that little boy, and he knelt down and just scooped him up in his arms. And then he planted a big kiss right on that birthmark. And all the other little children started to applaud because they knew if Father Jim said that that little boy was precious and loved, that it was true. He was precious and he was loved and they would accept him and love him too. My friends, that's the witness of the church to the world when we gather together in this community of saints and we welcome in the people of all ages, nations, races, sexual orientations, people into this community of faith and say, you are loved, you are precious in God's sight, you belong you are valued. Jesus loves you, and we do too. The meal before us today is a community, a meal that was born out of that love, that love that we share with one another. The meal is made by hands across this globe. Different types of bread are shared, but we are the one body sharing in this one faith, this one spirit, this one hope together, that we for the world might proclaim God's love to all who feel unloved and unworthy. If you are here today or if you are watching online and you feel unloved, unworthy, if you feel invisible like those children that Jesus welcomed on his knee that day, I want you to hear this good news of the gospel. All are included in God's kingdom. God invites us all to this table of grace and love and forgiveness. We come to this table recognizing recognizing that all of us fall short of the glory of God. But because of God's great love for us, 
God reaches out to us and helps us to become the best that we can be, each and every one of us. And this community of faith is where we are reminded of those ways that Christ teaches us to love one another, to listen to one another, to build each other up, as you read through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, you hear that phrase over and over again, one another. We are to encourage one another, rejoice with one another, weep with one another. We are to care for one another. We are to pray for one another. We are here for one another, just as Jesus is here for each one of us. As we come to this table of grace this day, may we remember that. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.